Painting eyes on miniatures can be extremely difficult, but today we're going through the ins and outs of painting eyes, and I'm also going to show you a tool that makes painting eyes ridiculously simple. Hey everyone, you're watching Squidmore Miniatures, and I'm Emil. Today, I've got a flu. And I've got some painkillers in my system. So I'm sorry in advance if my voice is really bad and I look very tired, because I am very tired. But that's okay. Let's make a fun and educational video today. As mentioned in the intro, today is going to be about painting eyes. I'm going to show you the advanced way of painting eyes, and then I'm going to show you the easy way of painting eyes, and then I'm going to show you a secret hack that makes painting eyes ridiculously simple. So, let's not talk anymore, because my voice won't take it anymore. Let's just start painting, and then I can get some rest. So, let's start by taking a look at these flu-infested eyes of mine. They're very beautiful. Let's see how they look, and what we can take away from that when we start painting our eyes. I am just looking straight into the camera. Interesting thing to note here is that my pupils and my iris isn't centered on the eye. They're actually a little bit more onto the center of my face. Just a tiny, tiny bit more on the inner side of the, the face, closer to the nose, so to say. And the reason for this is because if I'm looking at something that's straight ahead, both my eyes are meeting up somewhere, and that place is obviously in the center of the lens. And for them to look into that place, they need to be both placed a little bit more into the side of the nose. Further away I look at something, obviously the more centered they are going to be, but for this case the camera is quite close. And the second thing we're going to look at is if you want to paint eyes looking to the side. This eye is almost completely gone to the side, while this one we can see that we have a bit of a white spot here from the eye, which means that this eye is more on the side than this one is. And that's one of these things that uh, you often don't think about when you're placing your eyes that they are often not placed on the exact same spot But they're actually kind of following each other in a non-symmetric way So that's it for the position of the eyes now. Let's talk about how the eye actually looks So the first thing we notice here is that I obviously have a very beautiful eye that's very bloodshot. Another small detail that people often miss is an eye is very reflective and when we paint them we paint them ridiculously small but there are almost always these white lines here that reflects light at the bottom of the eye and you also have it here on the inside of the eye where you have the red skin here. Let's start with the white part of the eye. We can see that the eye is actually not white, it's actually quite gray. And depending on where on the eye we are, here is the brightest point. Obviously because the light is coming from the left here, you can see that in the reflection. So this is the brightest point. And depending on where the light is, it's gonna be darker on the opposite side, obviously. And you can also see that it's going into like a very brown, dark red, umber tone almost here. On, on the outer side of the eye. So when we're shading something, if you have the light coming from above, it's going to be a bit darker maybe on, on this lower end here instead of on the outer side as it is on my eye. So depending on where you place the light, obviously it's gonna be a bit different. The second thing we can see is that my iris is darkest on the very edge of it. And this is common with everyone's eyes. And then you have all my eye patterns here. But you can see here on the top part, the eye is actually darker. It's almost black. And I'm not entirely sure of this. I was talking to Roman Grube about it, and he said it's because the eye is translucent. So the light shines through from above, and here is where it reflects. But I also think it's because uh, you have a shadow here from your eyelid and the top hair of your eyebrows that shadows the top part of the eye. So there isn't as much light reflecting on these parts. But this is something that we can remember when, when we're going to paint our own eyes. Another thing uh, that's very common, I know now that I have a flu, so obviously I uh, am a bit more bloodshot than normally. But uh, 
almost all eyes have these blood veins going through the eyes. If you paint a very small eye on, say, a Warhammer figure, those are gonna be impossible, but if you do like a large figure that has super big eyes, you can probably paint these tiny details as well. And just one more thing, when we paint the iris here, we, we see that it's, it's pitch black. This part is super black, it doesn't reflect any light, uh, almost. <laughs> You can see my wife here in the in the eye but it's pretty much pitch black and then you have a small reflection here and it's almost always centered in the eye because the eye is round so it will have the same kind of shape here if you have many light sources in the room say you're painting someone that's outdoors or someone who's standing in a gate or something and maybe it has like two big light sources you can actually add more of these white reflections and that's totally fine uh, it could actually look really good to have a couple of reflections in an eye let's see if we can paint the eye the first thing we're going to do is kind of to shade the eye as we saw on the previous photo and we saw that almost everything had a bit of gray in it so we're not going to leave it white everything is going to be a bit gray and we saw also that it was like on the bottom part and the outer side of the eye was the darkest so we start by adding a bit of black and then we can go a bit more into like the umber and to do this i'm just going to i'm going to make it easy for me so so here we have something to work from i'm not going to paint the perfect eye here this is just to show an example of how it could look and we also want to add a bit of the the red tones maybe to like this part here and the iris and to do this I'm just going to I'm gonna make it easy for me so when we saw my eye we can go back and look at it here so you can see how the iris looks here and you can also see that a part of the iris is covered by my eyelid unless you want the look of a deer looking into the headlights you need to make sure that the some parts of the eye is covered by your eyelid the, the eye is a bit more closed if there's someone who's like squinting or something uh, even the bottom part of the eye down here would be covered by the bottom eyelid so when we start painting here what we do is we just paint an iris and we maybe place it there and then we just fill the eye with some dark blue because that's the color of my eye something like this uh, it's not my eye color but it's good enough <laughs> so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go even darker for the top part so what we do now is we just paint it a little bit darker on the top as we could see on the reference photo that we used and then we paint the bottom part of the eye. That would be a bit a, a bit brighter. So we take like a bright blue. If you would be using a brush, you would do like laces. So you have a little bit of it in the top. And then like the, the further down you go, the, the brighter it would be. And I usually have many different colors, but usually we paint them on such a small, small, small surface. So it's going to be impossible to make all these nice lines. Uh, if you have a super skill steady hand you can of course draw in patterns and things like that uh, that's over kill for me I can't do that but let's let's do things on the easy side for now so now we need to paint the pupil so we just do another circle it's in the center so and here we have something that's almost done for what what makes like a simple eye on a miniature so what we're going to do now is obviously we're going to paint the reflection and the reflection you can do this any way you want uh, we're going to use my photograph once again as a reference and we're going to paint a hard reflection here usually it covers a, a, a bit of the pupil and a little bit of the iris so this would be like a, a nice reflection starting to look like an eye nice it's a really crappy looking eye but you can see kind of the the gist of how an eye would look and if you want to go like even further you can as i said in the beginning we can paint like these reflections in the bottom of the eye but uh yeah and also one thing when we paint miniatures we kind of want to have like a, a bit of a darker line up here so now that i've actually drawn this and show you how it works Let's see how we can put this into work into our own miniatures. So we're by the painting desk now and 
I've got this large miniature and I'm also going to show you how you can paint it on a tiny miniature. So the first thing that I do is usually I paint like the base coat with like a dark brown. I'm using Dumble Brown for this one. And let's jump into the painting table and you can see exactly how it's gonna look. And so now because we're painting something that is so small, a lot of people think that I'm gonna bring out my smallest brush and just paint it small details using a super tiny, tiny, triple zero brush, but that's not the best way to go about it. Usually what I do is I pick a quite big brush because the big brushes they ho can hold more paint so they don't dry as fast. If you use a tiny brush it's gonna dry super fast for you. So when you take the paint from the palette and then start painting the paint is already dry. If you have a good big brush you have a lot of paint in here so it takes more time for it to dry as long as the tip is super good. That's the only thing you need to remember. As long as the tip is good you're good with a bigger brush. The second thing is you need to be steady when you paint. So usually what I do is I like to either rest my, my elbows towards myself or I rest my elbows on the desk. And the same thing goes for when I paint the, the face. I rest my elbows towards each other. I rest my hands, both my hands to the figure and just take tiny strokes leaning towards the figure. This is really difficult when you record a painting as well, but since you're not gonna record while you paint, I just strongly recommend you to just be super stable, use something else, and then go super close with your face and your eyes. Because you're gonna see that once you go this close, you're, you're gonna see that it's gonna be 10 times easier than if you are down here using the hand far away painting. So to paint the eye socket and the eyeballs, these are the three paints that I'm using. Dumbbell Brown, Rock Earth Flesh and White. And for the iris, I'm using Dark Sea Blue. So I just start by covering the whole eye in Dumbbell Brown. For the next step, I then mix in 50-50% mix of Dumbbell Brown and Rock Earth Flesh. With these, I just paint the eyeball, not the whole socket, just the eyeball. I then paint with 100% rock art flesh just in the center of the eye. And for the last step, I add some of the white that I have on the palette as well, about 50% of the white in 50% of the rock art flesh, painting on an even smaller surface in the center of the eye. It's now time to start painting the iris. I'm using dark sea blue and placing that in the top center of the eye. And to create the highlight of the eye, as we discussed earlier, we want to place the highlight in the bottom part of the iris. I'm just adding some white to the palette and mixing that with the dark sea blue. And the third step now, it's time for the pupil. I'm just using any random black that I have at home. Vallejo or Games Workshop are two great examples. And for the final step, we're painting the eye reflection. For this, I just dip the tip of my paintbrush into the white. I don't stir it into the brush as I normally do with paints. I just use the tip and dip that in the white and then dip that tip on the eye of the miniature in the center of the pupil. And the thought process for painting like Games Workshop mi miniatures is the same. The difference here is that you most likely can't paint like the shading on the iris and you most likely can only use like one color for the iris slash pupil. So usually what I do, I just start with like the brown and then I go with Reichlin Flesh Aid and then I go up to white. I show you in the recording in one second and then we go to the secret hack, okay? And sorry for this shameless plug before we start painting more eyes. Uh, I have a web shop where you can purchase some Squidmar merchandise. Uh, I have some awesome hoodies, sweatshirt and t-shirts. Like some of these awesome viewers that sent me photos of them wearing my merchandise. Uh, feel free to check that out if you want to buy some of that stuff. 
And so with this Games Workshop Manager, we just do the same thing. We start with the Dumal Brown, and then moving up to the Reckland Flesh Shade, and then adding some white to it to highlight the center of the eye. And now let's talk about the secret trick. This is something called a Micron Pen. These ones are just super tiny. It's like 0.03. Uh, millimeters I don't even know how tiny that is but the tip it's so small you can't even see it got even like a small edge on the tip and if you use this tiny tiny edge on the tiny tiny eye that's the super secret cheating because it's so much easier than using the brush so this is actually my favorite way of painting the eye on these tiny miniatures like space marines and figures like that so I just push this pen gently onto the eye of this orc and if you're feeling fancy you can also highlight them doing like we did with the previous miniature just taking a dab of white on the tip of your brush and dipping it in the center of this pupil but this should be way enough. Just look how simple and effective that looked and sure it might take a few tries but it's definitely a worth buy if you're looking to up your eye game. So friends I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you did hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated every week when I release a new video, hobby tips, painting tutorials etc. If you're interested in picking up the tools that I use today, maybe the pen tool or the brushes, I have linked everything on my website squidmar.com and in the video description as well, I linked some of the stuff. And those links goes to Amazon, so if you follow those links, I get a bit of a kickback and that's a great way of supporting this channel. Talking of great ways of supporting this channel, I have a Patreon page and it's growing incredibly fast and I'm so grateful for everyone that just chips in a few dollars to help keep this channel running and make sure that I can take a few days every week just thanks to the Patreon supporters. And everyone who joins the Patreon also gets full access to the Discord chat where we talk every day about miniatures, life, painting. We're about, I think, 160 different people now talking every day. so. Come join us and have some fun. I also want to send out a massive shout out to my three top patron supporters. Evan Weston, Albin Ostrom and the newest addition Russ Prentice. Thanks guys so much. You have no idea how much this support means. So everyone with that said, thanks so much again for watching and have a great day. I'll catch you next week.